Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are in Perthshire, as you saw on my Instagram story. So I've come to a location that I scouted at the beginning of the year. And this is a place called Concla Conclaven Bluebell Woods, um, or Conclaven Woods it's called, which is in the heart of Perthshire and it is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see from the light, we've got pretty much full sun all day today, which is creating um, amazing dappled light through the canopies and it just looks stunning. So we're going to go for a walk around and find out what sort of compositions we can get here. Obviously I know what I got here before because it was in the old woods but we're actually in the newer part of the woods and this is where the bluebells are and they are out in abundance and I've got my midgey bracelet on just in case, you never know. So let's go for a wee walk and see what we can find. This is my, technically my first shot of the day, which I'm actually going to talk about. This is a beautiful area. You'll notice I'm standing on the very, very edge of the path, which is there. So the reason for that is because we've taken my shot and it's lovely and quiet and you can hear a pin drop and a guy walked behind me, which is fair enough. And then all you heard was crunch, 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 and he was walking right through all the bluebells. Like, not even on a path, just, just through them. He was in and out in two seconds, so I think it was a very quickly taken picture, but there's signs everywhere. Like, don't trample on the bluebells. <laughs> Be respectful. I mean, once they're deep, they're deep, so... That's my rant over. So, literally, this shot is absolutely gorgeous. I've got um, a carpet of bluebells. You've got dappled light. You've got a rock in the foreground, you've got this beautiful tree branch hanging down with some fresh limey green growth on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. This one reminds me a lot of the one that I took in the Three Locks Forest Drive with the kind of the woodland scene. It's a very, very dense, dense part of the forest here. It looks fantastic. So my settings for this is I'm shooting at quite a shallow depth of field for obvious reasons. I'm also using a very, very long lens. I'm shooting at 150mm just now. And the reason for that is because I wanted to condense the bluebells. I find that's the best way to work. A lot of people like to get very, very low to the ground and get a wide angle and try and get everything in. What I'm trying to do is, is retain that colour more than anything, so I'm trying to make the bluebells, I don't really have to make them look more dense than they are, but I'm trying to make them look more dense than they are so that you get that really vibrant colour. I've done that, I've got the 150mm on, I'm shooting at uh, f5.6, so fairly shallow depth of field for a landscape picture. I'm shooting at ISO 80. Um, and a sixtieth of a second. Yeah, we're going to continue around and uh, see what else we can find. Right, so welcome to technically photo number three. This is a stunning me photo. I came down here because of this big log line on the bluebells, which is amazing. Awesome kind of light cutting across the middle of it, um, which looks fantastic. So you've got streaks of light kind of come across the middle of the floor. What I've actually found is by getting down lower, initially I was about four feet up, but by getting down lower, um, I've still got the long lens on and I'm basically just focusing on a wee row of white flowers which are cutting through the middle of the bluebells. Also because I'm so low down it just looks like a perfect line. So it kind of looks like a wee star trail or something. Or... It's beautiful, it's really nice here. That's not the native birds, that's some wains. It was beautiful and quiet. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what they're doing. So this shot is was supposed to show <laughs> how beautiful and serene this place was but um, it's very busy, it's a Sunday afternoon and it's hoaching and no midges. So we'll can keep walking and see if we can get to a quieter spot. <laughs> As you probably noticed, there's no tri there's no camera on that tripod. I put it back in my bag because it's supposed to be golden hour just now and it's there's no light getting through here at all. That's a place called Alva Glen and for all intents and purposes it's, it's a really nice walk. It's lovely, it's very peaceful, it's a nice woodland walk but I came specifically to see this waterfall behind me. It's not in full spay so it's pretty much just a drivel. I mean it's still lovely but nah, I'm not feeling it so... <laughs> 
Um, there's actually a waterfall you can just about see through the back as well. Yeah, it's not really, there's no light there. It's not really, it's nice to look at, but for photography purposes, I'm probably going to call it a day and go home and have a look at the photos. It's not far from where I was before. It's probably about 30 miles, I think, from where I was before. But yeah, I'm going to just pack up the tripod and head back and have a look at the images I did get from the Blue Bellwood in King Clavin because it was stunning. So I'll um, go and have a look at the photos and see how they turned out. So I managed to come away with five pictures from this photo shoot, two of which you haven't actually seen me film, they were on the way home. But the first one that I got that I was really happy with was uh, just about 10-15 minutes into my walk around Clavin Bluebellwood, which obviously you saw me going to before, but the last time I went there I was looking for the witness trees from Outlander. But that wasn't on the agenda for this trip. This trip was all about the Bluebells because I've heard it was probably one of the most stunning places to see the Bluebells. That and Glenfinglas apparently are the best places to see them in Scotland. So obviously when I was there last time it was January or February I think so there was literally nothing. Went back this time with full expectations of Bluebells and I was not disappointed. They were perfect. The conditions were perfect. There was no wind. It was just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So it doesn't take you long to get around it, but when you're taking pictures, you tend to either bump into other photographers, bump into loads of wains, bump into loads of dogs, which is fine, I suppose, because <laughs> they're all out for a Sunday afternoon walk. So the, the walk itself was a lovely, pleasant walk, um, apart from a couple of bits you saw in the video where I was trying to film when there was kids shouting and bawling, which is fine because they're out enjoying themselves. So the first image that I came away with was for about 10 minutes in the walk, as I said. It was a wee tree that caught my eye, it was a sort of yellowy green tree sort of sandwiched between two large thick trunks and then you had this beautiful bluebell carpet underneath it. So there's a bit of a separation between the, the tree leaves and the bluebells so it's quite clearly to distinguish which is which. Um, I quite liked it, it's just nice to have something that contrasts against each other, especially the blue and yellow tones that are probably going to feature quite a lot in these pictures and it almost has quite a painting kind of like thing about it. There's a lot of influence here from different artists that I, I quite like um, and I've also had them in my head while I've been shooting the photographs and um, while I was shooting this picture I had a thought of putting on a long exposure and they probably go why would you do that? Everything would just look blurry and out of focus so that was sort of the point. I wanted to make things go blurry and out of focus. There's this thing that I've been wanting to try that I've only ever photographed once with beaches I think it was. Yeah it was a beach up top, top of Scotland and it had the most gorgeous colour of water and this pure white sand and what I think I had on like a maybe a two minute exposure or something like that I can't remember and literally just panned across the beach and it sounds like it's going to be rubbish but it's very abstract very very cool I really like it I love that sort of style of photography so the second picture I got was this one and I love this one literally when I was up at eye level sort of standing upright you couldn't really see this picture but it wasn't until I actually went back down to put my tripod away and when I came down to that level then I saw there was a perfect line of white flowers in amongst the bluebells and it almost looked like a starry I've got a lot of Van Gogh artistry stuff in my head just now <laughs> it looked like a starry starry night just the way the white flowers were sort of dotted across the bluebells it looks amazing I just loved it so I'm um, yeah, quickly, this is when I think I was filming when the kids were shouting pong. So I quickly grabbed this shot, love it, absolutely love it. So this picture was taken when I was watch walking back to the nature trail as I was waiting for dogs and people to pass by. I was like, you don't want to tell me to move it. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting patiently for them to kind of continue with their walk. Um, I happened to turn around and as I turned around, the sun just burst through the trees and I had my cab my camera was still on my tripod at times. So I was only moving from one spot to another at this point. So I literally turned around got my exposure underexposed very slightly which I think helped with the sun rays and I got this shot and I absolutely love it, it's amazing. This would have maybe been better if it had been early in the morning if you'd got that sort of sunburst but it wouldn't have came through this part of the trees, it would have been probably the opposite end. But I think that early morning mist maybe with this sort of shot would look fantastic. Uh, there was a couple of pine cones and stuff on the floor and the way the light uh, was coming through the trees it just sort of hit the pine cones and lit them up and it just I love it yeah there's something quite autumnal about this picture and I don't know why because it's the middle of spring <laughs> so um, I think it's just because it was starting pretty much I think we we're about 10-15 minutes into golden hour for this shot and I think that kind of shows the light is completely different from the rest of the photographs the rest of the photographs have a very soft uh, dappled light which sort of comes in streaks across the bluebell floor so um yeah this is a very very different type of light and this is beautiful to shoot in but very difficult because I also had to shoot straight into the sun to get this you can actually see the sun 
peeking behind the sort of top center of the damage there um, which i've left it in a lot of people would probably have cropped that out but i quite liked it so i think it added a bit of focus on where the sun rays were coming from so i just left it in no bluebells in it at all because this was a completely different part of the forest but i think it still works this shot i didn't vlog this bit because i initially took this with a long lens wasn't sure if i liked it and then didn't shoot anything else so and then the drone crashed so that was a bit of a scary moment you're surrounded by a silver quarry here this is alva glen and i'm not sure if it's a working quarry or not but there's still probably quite a lot of silver there whatever happened the drone just went crazy it literally just wouldn't take commands it wouldn't stay hovering it wouldn't do anything this shot um was the only shot i got here because the rest of the time was spent protecting your face and your hair and Try not to get tangled up in a drone, which would probably take your finger off. So this photograph, I actually really like it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a surprise when I got my SD card back into the, the laptop and started processing images and I came across this one and I forgot all about it. And I really like it. I love the colours on the wall. Um, the only thing I wished was I had a little bit more water. I quite like the two vertical stripes coming down the front and then you've got the wee waterfall further up the back of the image, uh, which also the, the long lens sort of compressed it all together. So makes it feel a lot closer than it was. It was actually quite far away. There's a huge canopy of trees above you, so you're literally surrounded by trees above you and around you. So I'm not sure what the chance of getting any sunlight on this waterfall would be at any time of day. You'd maybe get some dappled light coming through, maybe midday, but I don't know. I'd have to go back and have a look. And this one, I absolutely love it. This was a, where could I stop the car? Where could I stop the car? Because I literally could not find a lay-by anywhere to try and get this. I saw the, I thought it was a house, but it's actually much further away than I expected. Apparently it's an old mill. Hang on. Right, so apparently that building you can just about see, which gives amazing scale in the picture, is called Strood Mill. It's a former woolen mill and it's now flats. And thanks to Chris Lauder <laughs> for giving me the, the name of it. It's also in the, town of Alva as well. So it's not far from Alva Glen where it was literally on, I was on my, my way back to Glasgow when I came across it. So there was tractor lines leading up to where that was and you had the last of the light hitting the top of the hill and the hill is called the Nebit, I think it's called. <laughs> so it just looks amazing. The contrast between the, the mountain and the very subtle green tones in the mountain and then you've got the, the sort of dark foreboding nature of the mountain with that tiny little, it looks tiny, it looks like a house, but it's actually an old mill so it's huge. And then you've got a little bit of blue sky, the yellow fields, I just love it. Everyone's been telling me that it causes absolute havoc with your nose and if you've got hay fever, so not to get too close to it, not to get it on your clothes, not to get it anywhere. So I took that advice and I shot it from the side of the road. Yeah, but I've really got a thing about catching that light on the top of mountains. I think it just looks phenomenal, that last light hitting them. I'm not sure whether it would have suited a square crop more than a 4x5 crop. I think I've cropped it as a 4x5. But I think it might suit a square crop, but it would take away too much of the yellow, I think, and would be pretty much be mostly the mountains, so I'm not really sure. I think I'll probably just keep it as a 4 by 5 crop. So I hope you've enjoyed this bumper crop of photos. I managed to get five from this location, which two of them are completely unexpected, so I was really happy. I know it's going back to bluebells again, but it is the season, and I'm probably going to shoot them every year now just because of how stunning they are. I think it's a really good idea to actually plan your shoots around the seasons. You can plan ahead, because I already know what I'm doing in June and July. I know where I'm going in June and July. I've got something awesome coming up in July and potentially the first week in August, I think I'm going to do another road trip. No, I've got three road trips planned actually. So I've got Isle of Skye, the North Coast 500 and the uh, East Coast 250, which are coming up in the next three months. I can't wait to go and do them. So I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. And once again, thank you very much for your support and for continuing to watch the channel. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And until next week, I'll see you soon. Bye.